What's happening to my YouTube family? Repeat after me, it's all coming together. That's our title for this month's series. All things are gonna to work together for the good. From the word to the person, from the person to the place, from the place to the promise. That's our lives. In this December month, it's all coming together. You too, let's do it together. Always pay attention to timing. And here you are at the end of the month and God is saying, all things are coming together. Everything that you've gone through has prepared you for your now. And all things are coming together. So one of the things that I know that bother many people is, is when you feel like you've missed your season, or you feel as if you're too old, and the enemy will try to play tricks on your mind to make you think or feel that God has forgotten about you. If you don't mind, can you just nudge your neighbor and tell him you're right on time? So you all know that I celebrated my birthday last week and I'm getting older. And at a certain age that you get, you watch the news all the time. And I'm at that age that I have to watch the national news at 5.30. Yep, that is me. But I watch the news, not just to watch it, but I always watch the news as an intercessor so I can know what I need to intercede about. Um, but I saw something that I knew that would encourage you, and I want to share with you a video, because many of you all think that he's forgotten about you or that you've missed your season. And I need this to be encouragement to you. For my 1230 service, if you could do me a favor, can you unplug from social media for just a few minutes? Do me a favor, don't check your inbox while we're in here right now. There's a word from the Lord, and I don't want you to miss the word because you're trying to see what your friends are trying to tell you. They ain't saying nothing. Listen, pay attention to the screen. Our first tie goes to the red hot new artist taking the music world by storm at 95 years old. Angela Alvarez is nominated at Thursday's Latin Grammy Awards in Las Vegas for Best New Artist. Again, she's 95. Alvarez grew up in Cuba dreaming of being a professional singer, but life got in the way. When Fidel Castro came to power, she and her husband Orlando sent their children to the United States before immigrating themselves. Children lived in an orphanage for two years until the family was reunited, settling in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Over the years, Angela Angela lost both her husband and her daughter to cancer. In an interview with the Washington Post, she said music helped her to cope with the pain. Then, eight years ago, she finally got her big break. Lo mucho que te quiero Y pienso que yo muero Si no te vuelvo a ver Angela's grandson, Carlos, a composer in Los Angeles, decided to record Angela's songs in a collection he calls The Diary of Her Life. Well, that 15-track album is out, and it's titled Angela Alvarez. It was released last year along with a documentary about her life. So now Carlos will be Angela's date to the Latin Grammys, where again, she is nominated and scheduled to perform at an event beforehand. Angela hopes her story teaches people to, in her words, never say, I can't do it. You can do it. Always try. So 95 years old, she releases her first CD. And at 95, she's nominated for a Grammy for new up-and-coming artists. And at 95, she wins her first Grammy. And it's so amazing that when you hear her story, how she was in Cuba and she had to send her kids, and then she came later, her kids lived in foster care, then she lost the husband and she lost the daughter, and she had been singing her life story. But there are certain things that she couldn't sing about because she had not gone through them. So certain things you have to go through before you can sing it, write it, or feel it. So then later her grandson says to her, come to meet me at the studio, and he recorded her years ago and just put it on the shelf. And then a friend walked up to him and says, so what are you waiting on? Are you waiting on her to die before you release her? And unbeknownst to him that when he released a 15-track CD, everybody wanted to hear what Granny had to say. And nobody thought that she would be nominated for a Grammy, and nobody definitely thought that she would win. But he said, I'm about to make the last first. And for somebody under the sound of my voice, 
every delay is about to be to your benefit. Those of y'all that still believe that God got time to do it, all I need you to do is just clap your hands and tell the Lord, I'm still here. And for many of you all, you need to understand that there's a word that has already been spoken over your life. There is a word that has been spoken over your life. When Christ came to the earth, he didn't just pop up. You're not just going to pop into your career. You're not just going to pop into your assignment. There's a process to get you there. And it all starts with the word. When Adam and Eve sinned against God, the Bible says that he said, the day that you eat of this tree, you will surely die. They did not drop dead immediately. See, there are three types of death. There's the physical death when the body goes back to the dust from whence it came. There's a spiritual death where there's a separation between you and God. And all of us, we're born in sin, we're shaped in iniquity. So when you came here, you came here alive but dead. And then there's the eternal death that we will never encounter. Because that's why he came to the world to save us. Why? Because we'll never taste the third death. Some of y'all, you need to thank God that you'll never, never... In the moment they died, that they died, their spiritual death, a word of prophecy was released immediately in the beginning in Genesis, pointing towards the, new ta to the, towards the New Testament. A savior is coming. A redeemer is coming. Somebody's going to come to you that's going to close the gap. An announcement is being made. It hasn't arrived yet, but there's a word that's, that's being spoken, what shall come to pass. And for many of you all under the sound of my voice, I need you to hear me. There's a word that's already been spoken over your life. You have not arrived to it as of yet, but it does not get a peer who you going to be. Those of you that believe that God has not forgotten about you, but he still has a word over your life. Come on here. The reason you have not died yet is because the word has not been performed. I'm going to say that again. The reason that you have not had your funeral yet is because the word has not been performed. Who you see today is not who you're going to see tomorrow. God, I wish I was in the building with faith people. I got to get your faith up because you can't even receive this. You ain't got no faith. So watch me. I'm going to have you touching some day. Why? Because I need to stir your faith up. Please touch your neighbor. Tell them there's a word over your life. Tell them again. There's a word over your life. Now, I need you to hear me. It wasn't just spoken this one time, but if you search the scripture, there are a total of 55 prophecies that point to the New Testament. 55 prophecies that keep coming up, keep coming up, keep coming up, keep coming up. A Savior's coming. A Redeemer is coming. Watch me. 50, watch me. And it had to go through 42 generations. Please listen to this. If you study the scripture, the word talks about the, the redeemer, but it's in four categories. Number one, it talks about his birth. Number two, it talks about his ministry. Number three, it talks about his death. But we're not going to leave it right there. Oh, he's going to get up again. There's a word that talks about you going down, but there's another word talk about you bouncing back. I'll slap you. I'll slap you. If you don't clap your hands, I'll slap you. Don't just prophesy my death. Prophesy my resurrection. I might go down, but I'm not going to stay down always. There's a bounce-up anointing on my... And there's a road to talk about his role in the church. There's a word. In Isaiah, I can show you the word. And for many of you all, you're living with a question mark because you don't have an exclamation point. Because if you have an exclamation point, that means that you know who you are. You don't have to walk around asking somebody to prophesy over you. You already know who you shall become. And I show you with the word of his ministry. Look at this in Isaiah 9 and 6. It says, for unto us a child is born. How are you talking about it is and it hasn't shown up yet? I need you to tell you, what's me? You haven't arrived that, but it's already in place. You haven't become that yet, but you're already that. Come on here. You're not living in it yet in the natural, but in the spirit, you've already moved. God, I fear you today. You haven't opened the door yet, but in the word, the door's already closed behind you. For unto us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. Well, what is he going to do? And the government will be on his shoulders. He ain't no punk either. He's strong enough to carry what nobody else can carry. Watch me. Titles. 
that he will be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. It doesn't matter what you call me. What is he said about me? I need you to touch two people and tell them there's a word over your life. Please hear me. You're not who they say you are. They are not the alpha, neither are they omega. God has already spoken a word of 55 times. 55 times he keeps pointing something's coming something's coming something's coming something's coming 42 generations something something's coming and then he doesn't say another word and some of y'all are in a season in your life that God's not speaking because you stuck between the old and the new Let's talk. In the Old Testament, he speaks 55 times, and then he stops talking. And he doesn't talk again, watch me, for 430 years that he's not saying anything. But just because he's silent don't mean that it's not going to happen. Ooh, just because you don't feel him today doesn't mean that he's not present. God I'm going to need a strong anointing at this 1230 service. And I need you to fall in this building with power. Please hear me. Please hear me. It's quiet right now, but it's going to be screaming later. Don't. It's called the inter-testimonial period. Where you stuck between the old. And the new. And for some of y'all, just because you're sp stuck doesn't mean that he hasn't spoken. Does he have to keep reminding you or can you keep up with what he already said? <laughs> you can't keep running around asking somebody, give me a word, give me a word, give me a word. It's time for you to know who you are. That's not arrogance. That's confidence. That's assurance. Knowing that his hand is on your life. Oh my God. So for 430 years, he doesn't speak. So what's going on? Once the word is released, please hear me. Once the word is released, it's doing what it do. Please hear me. Everybody repeat after me again. You're going to get this today. There's a word over my life. You've already been marked for greatness. Come on, say it again. There's a word over my life. Come on here. I am not who they say I am. I am who God says I am. He's already told me that I'm chosen. He's already told me that I'm favored. He's already told me that I'm anointed. You don't have to like me. It doesn't matter that he's already spoken. I don't need to know your opinion of me. I know his, I know his word. I know Hey, Rabasha, calm down, John, calm down. I know his word. And some of y'all, you're sitting confused because you don't know that you know. That's what the Bible says, make your calling and election sure. You got to know who you are. Don't walk in the room trying to ask somebody, do you know who I am? No, no, no. When I walk in, my, come on here, my favor going to scream my name. When I walk in, the oil is going to make room for me. People are going to back up. So watch this. For everyone, while you're in the building, the word is working. While you sleep, the word is still working. <laughs> while you feel like it's quiet, it's quiet in your environment. It's quiet in your day, but in your next year, it's screaming loud and clear. While you're in 22, 20, 20, 22, he's already in 23, making the word prepare a way for you. Can, I mean, come on, lean in, lean in, look, lean in, look at the screen, Isaiah 55 and 11. So is my word, so is my word, so is my word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me empty. Cause, so when I speak over you, the word has to go and do it. And it can't re return back to heaven until it has done what he released it to do. 
If there's somebody in sound of my voice, I need you to hear me. He's already spoken. He's already spoken. So what is the word doing? Because look, look, look at this. But what is the word? It's going to accomplish what God desires for it to accomplish. What's mean? So the word is going to make them bless me. The word is going to make the earth yield what belongs to me, y'all. The word, the, word, the word that has been spoken over my life? Are you kidding me? And it will accomplish what I desire. And it's going to achieve the purpose for which I Sin it. Last time about diversion, I talked about his word is alive. His word is active. His word is sharp. His word is penetrating. His word is judging between your heart and your mind. And his word is eternal. His word is alive. His word is, while you sitting down, his word is like this. While you, while you, while you word, his word is active. His word is doing something. His, while, while you sit here, his word is sharp. It's separating you from some people. It's cutting some things up off of you. Because I got to make sure that you're prepared. Watch me. When you get there, you're going to be there for the rest of your life. So I need to make sure that I get you ready for everything watch me you're not gonna have favor just temporarily but it's gonna be on you for the rest of your god i want to fight somebody I'm, I'm sorry this word is violent and the violent take it by force and i'm trying so his word is active and his word his word is active and his word is alive his word is sharp his word is penetrating his word is knocking through knocking down something it's knocking down something so by the time i get there all i got to do is walk into it like some of y'all have you ever seen that door that watch me when you in it they say don't touch it all you got to do is just show up and when you show up the door just start turning without you doing anything without all you had to do was show up i came to tell you that's what your 2023 gonna be like all you got to do is show up and certain things are gonna start moving in the way that you think that why is it moving? Because the word. I need you to make sure you sit next to some old, some old word people, please. Can you touch three people and say, there's a word over my life. There's a word. There's a word over my life. 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 I don't need to know my zodiac sign. There's a word over my life. I don't need to talk to a witch. I don't need to talk to a palm reader. I don't need no sage. Y'all ain't gonna sit in me. I have a word over my life. So after he speaks it, after he releases it, and it's accomplishing and achieving, what is God doing while you're there here? Please watch. In Isaiah 1 and 12, it's like Jeremiah 1 and 12, it's on the screen, it says, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Ooh, I'm not just going to send you out there. I'm watching. And there's going to be some things that's going to try to stop you. But I'm here to protect you from danger seen and unseen. Because my word cannot return unto me empty. Can I tell you something? The devil wanted to kill some of y'all in your sleep. But God said, no, uh-uh. It hasn't been fulfilled yet. The enemy wanted to try to hurt you and harm you. Watch me. Come on, lean in, please. There is a word over your life. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. So my grandmother and my mother made sure that I understood at a young age, John, you are different. So my grandmother and my mother had to tell me that when my mother was pregnant with me when I was in her womb, she was at church on a Friday night. And we, from a, we were from a storefront church of God in Christ. For those of you that don't know, we had something called Terry services. Can I educate you, Baptists, Methodists, and Catholics? <laughs> we would just get on the altar and just call on Jesus. 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 So why are you calling them? Because I need them. Jesus. Jesus. And his ear is not too heavy that it cannot hear you. His hand is not too short that it cannot save you. So in this Friday night, the power of God hit the building. And my mother said that I began to just turn, just begin. And she thought 
that she was having a miscarriage. And she ran to my grandmother out of fear, saying, I think I'm losing my child. My grandmother didn't even flinch. She looked at my mother and said, girl, you ain't losing no baby. And laid her hand on her belly and said, God, just marked your child. And I came to let some of y'all know that's why your warfare is heavy because you were marked before you even hit the earth. That's why you're different. That's why you never fit in. That's why demons don't like you. That's why people look at you like you crazy. Why? Because you have already been marked before you hit the earth. Who are you? You've been predestined for greatness. Watch me. But Mark don't mean that you won't have to go through nothing. Mark doesn't exempt you from hell. Mark doesn't exempt you from warfare. As a matter of fact, I would argue with you, the, the bigger the mark, the bigger the warfare. Y'all ain't got to and this explains why the devil did everything he could to kill you, discourage you, dismantle you at a young age because he knew that his darkness is in trouble. Let's talk. So before Samson was even conceived, an angel was sent to tell his parents, hey, you know you're going to birth a deliverer, right? <laughs> Samuel, Hannah in the temple praying, asking to be pregnant. She said, God, if you give me a boy child, I'll give him back to you. And then she conceives, and she births a history maker. Please listen to me, because some of y'all people try to put you in one lane. It's not you. He wasn't just a prophet, he was a priest. He wasn't just a priest, he was a judge. He's the only person in the, new, in, the, in the Old Testament that holds three positions at one time. And I came to some of y'all, you're limiting your positions. You're the history maker. You're the business owner and a millionaire. You're the millionaire and the teacher. You're the teacher and the preacher and the prophet. I just want to let somebody, you have multiple streams coming in your direction. I only want to talk to those of us that know that God's idea of us is bigger than ours. Can I get you to lift your hands if you just believe that God is up to something in your life? Can you lift your hands and worship God for like five seconds? Give me five. Four. Three. You're that before you're that. You're that before you become that. You're that before you become that. You're that before you become that. Can I show you? Like, Joshua, you got your own business before you got your own business. You had it before you got it. You were it before you, became, before you stepped into it. You were anointed before you even felt anointed. You were saved before you asked him to save you. Y'all ain't going to say that to me. You were delivered even when you was in bondage. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. You were free, although you felt like you were bound. Can I back it up? Why? How you, what you say? Because there was a word that declared that I would be. Bring the scripture up in Jeremiah 1. Before I doggone it formed you. Now that word doggone it ain't in the Bible, but I felt like adding it right there. Because some of y'all from 63rd Street, I got I to break it down. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born. I set you apart from your mama, your daddy, your sisters, your brothers. I made sure you might be born in it, but you're not going to be it. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Yep, they schizophrenic. Yep, they're suicidal. But you'll never hear or be whatever they... And to prove to you that I got you, I've already figured out your future. I have appointed you. You don't have to ask men to appoint you. You don't have to ask people to accept you. When they see it on you, they go, watch me. You don't have to like me, but you're going to respect the oil that is on my life. I wish I had somebody in the building that know that this ain't none of me. This is. I need you to testify to three people around you. Look at someone and say, this ain't me. This is all. 
God. That's why when you get a glimpse of glory, you start losing your mind giving God praise. Why? Because I shouldn't even be here. Watch me. And some of y'all have messed around and let people stop your praise. I wish I would. Let somebody that never declared anything over my life tell me how I should give my God a praise. He's deserving of more. I want to see if you're around somebody that got a word. Watch me. I'm not asking you to praise God for what you presently have, but I want you to praise God for what you got. Did you miss it? I'm not asking you to praise God for what you physically have, but I'm telling you to praise God for what you have. On the count of three, let your praise match what you have. One, two, three, go! There's a word over my life. There's a word over my life. And the promises of God are yea and amen. His word says that I am healed. Come on, find you another word person. If I got a word and you got a word, when we connect, there's supposed to be a leaping. Somebody gonna be Mary and somebody gonna be Elizabeth. And when I hit your sound, something gonna leap in me. I can't leap until I meet you. Grab somebody by the hand and shake it and say, there's a word over my life. And it won't leave me alone. There's a word over my life. And it won't let me say what I mean. There's a word over my life. You already blessed. You already healed. Come on, y'all, get spiritual. Shake somebody's hand. You about to shake depression off of them. You about to shake the enemy out of their ear. There's a word over. Go ahead and prophesy to them. You've been having a season of silence, but hear the word of the Lord. There is a word over your life. Hey, Karaba, shake it. I need to get out of this. There is a word over your life. You are blessed, you are healed, you are anointed, you are favored, you are chosen, you are called, you are peculiar. It's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. I gotta get out of this. You were a principal before they gave you the job. You were a manager before they gave you the position. You were a preacher before you even learned a word. You were a prophet before you learned how to prophesy. You were a business owner but never owned a business. Come on, I got 20 minutes. Come on, you wait till you see that somebody and say, Oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Oh, ye suicidal, hear the word of the Lord. Oh, ye discouraged. Oh, ye trouble. Again, I got to come back. Ah, yeah. Hey. Come on, y'all. Shake their hand again. Say, there's a word over your life. It hasn't landed yet. It's circling in the atmosphere. But the runway is about to be clear.
you closer now than you were yesterday. You closer at the end of the year than you were at the beginning of the year. You closer this year than you were three years ago. Some of y'all need to do a prophetic move. That's a word over my life. It doesn't matter what you think. There's a word over my life. It's going to accomplish. It's going to accomplish. And it's going to achieve. You see what I just said? There's a word over my life. It's going to accomplish. It's going to pay your tuition. It's going to stamp your passport. Come on, Christian. It's going to give you pain. You told me no because your assignment don't go with my word. You didn't let me in because your seat don't go with my assignment. Come on, let's break it down. You got a word, but you're not exempt. You have a word, but you're not exempt. out of this. I'm going to tell you why some of y'all not shouting. I'm going to tell you why you're not shouting in a few more minutes. But all I need you to do is identify at least you got a word. Even if it hasn't landed yet, please know that God has already spoken. Can you defy every lying demon in hell by opening your mouth and say, I decree and I declare that there is a word. So now let's go. Just because you have a word does not mean that you're exempt. Have a seat, one minute. Just because you have a word does not mean that you're exempt because there's some challenges that go with you being who you are. <laughs> I wish it was just that simple. You got a word, okay, bam. That, it doesn't move like that. I wish it did move like that. See, there's revelation and then there's manifestation. There's a revelation, you can get a word, but then the manifestation is what might take a little time. And what do you do when your, when your manifestation is not aligning with your revelation? And so what are some of the challenges? I need you to hear me. One of the biggest challenges is time. Like, why would you tell me this and then make me wait? I wish you had not told me. You lying, you nosy. <laughs> Come on, y'all, let's talk. Time, like for real, like how many, how many, how long is this gonna take? <laughs> like the, the hardest thing to do is to wait on this thing, especially, can I, talk, can I talk age for a minute? Especially when you look to your right and your left and you see somebody younger than you, oh, hell to the no, no, no. <laughs> 
That's a song. I'm not cussing. I'm just saying a song. <laughs> can I show you? Can I show? Can I show you? Can I show you a menu of waiting? Joseph had to wait thirteen years. You were seventeen when you when he gave you the revelation, but you didn't get it until you were thirty. Abraham, he had to wait 25 years. It gets better. He doesn't speak to him until he's 75. Shut up talking to me. And you're going to tell me you're going to have a kid. For real, though? And then you make me wait 25 years before I see it. A hundred? Baby, bye. But in between that time, he met a woman by the name of Hagar. And he birthed an Ishmael when he should have birthed an Isaac. Never set up for your Ishmael when you've been promised an Isaac. Even if you birthed an Ishmael out of sin or it was a, a slip up, he's still coming to get you. The, the word is still attached to your life because your word is bigger than your mess up. I wish those that have ever made a mistake could be, could, everybody that's ever made a mistake can you thank God that he didn't hold that thing against you everybody that know that you're not perfect and it's Moses had to wait Moses had to wait 40 no let's go back Moses had to wait 80 years if you study history he spent his first 40 years thinking he was somebody he spent his next 40 years realizing he was nobody. He spent his last 40 years realizing that God could use. How long is it going to take for you to realize that you're nothing without God? The sooner that you lose you, then you can get him. I see, for those of you that feel like you wait, I don't understand why I wait so long. If Jesus had to wait, he came to the earth to be a redeemer. He did not come out the room, run down about he wasn't at the nursery laying hands on kids and laying them out. He wasn't at, the, at, at school like, come on, I got a word for you. I got a word for you. He had to wait. Can I tell you something? He came out of the gate at 12 years old. His parents left him at the synagogue. He at the synagogue blowing everybody's mind. Mary, Mary and Joseph said, where is Jesus? They had to go and get Jesus because he came out the gate too soon. Some of y'all came out soon that he had to pull you back because you weren't quite ready yet. And he didn't let him out until he turned 30. I need you to think... See, it takes a level of maturity, but you can tell God, can I thank you that you didn't give me what I prayed for? Can I thank you that you didn't let me start when I wanted to start? Can I thank you that you made me wait for everything that you got? Those of you that are glad that he didn't let you marry who you wanted to marry, go where you wanted to go, live where you wanted to live, sign what you wanted to sign. to wait 30 years but he did more in three years than some people do in 30 hear me clearly every delay is about to be to your benefit i don't want to talk to everybody i only want to talk to those that know that god still got time to do it this praise is not for everybody if you don't believe that god gonna do it for then you sit your behind right where you sitting but those of y'all that believe that god still got time to do it how you know he got time as long as there's breath in your body that means he still got time to do it on the count of three i want you to give god a praise that you're right on time that you're look at me that you're right on time you're right where you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing with who you're supposed to be with and he's about to make up for that time on the count of three the praise is on you one two three go He got you. He got your name. He has your resume. He got your business. He got your family. He still has time. Can I give you a scripture? Can I, can I give you a scripture? Can I give you a scripture to help with my impatience? Because I was one that was impatient, Charlotte, and I kept hearing, it's going to happen today. Today is your day. Today. Today is your day and tomorrow. It's the same. 
I had to get revelation in that. Can I show you the scripture? This, 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 this is what blessed me. It is going to happen today. But in 2 Peter 3 and 8, but do not forget this one thing while you're looking at your clock and your calendar. Dear friends, with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like one day. So when we say it's going to happen, that means he got a thousand years for it to happen. Well, that explains why we keep saying it's going to happen. It's getting ready to happen. I need you to test me and say, your name is about to be brought up today. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody. Come on, y'all, please. Uh, tell somebody, you're about to move today. I feel God in this thing right already. Connect. But words don't exempt you. But words don't exempt you. But words don't exempt you. So how can you be anointed? And this is the thing. You gotta hear me. Like if you're so anointed and there's so much word over your life then why, am I, why do I have to go through so much? <laughs> so another thing, you, you got to get over time and you have to get over your trials. Your trials. Like, really? You want, you want the bigger the mark? The, the bigger the trial? The devil not messing with people who are going nowhere. And if he stay on you, your future is. See, the problem is that some of y'all would like to act like you don't ever go through anything. Or you've been through it, come out, now you want to cover up what you've been through. Stop it. We all knew you were crazy. Can I show you the scripture? About trials. Dear friends, do you not know in 2 Peter 3 and 8, he said, dear friends. He go in 1 Peter 4, dear friends, do not be surprised. It's a fiery ordeal that has come on you, here's the line, to test the word that is on your life. It's there to make you question if you really got what you say you have. But when that thing comes, I need you not to be surprised as though something strange were happening to you. This is what goes with being called. It is what it is. You're not going to be used by God and everybody going to love you. Stop it. You're not going to break curses and everybody just cheering you on. He, the devil will get in your mama, your daddy. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. He'll even get in your pastor to me. You're anointed and you're going through trials. David on the field. God rejects Saul and, and tells Samuel, go to Jesse's house. I've already picked my next king. They pour the oil on him. They pour the oil on him, but don't tell him what kind of trials you're going to have to go through. Because you're going to have to marry Saul's daughter, Micah, who's really not going to love you. As a matter of fact, she's going to let you down out the house and then go marry another man. And then when you go get her, she's going to come crying because she got a soul tied with somebody else. But I thought my oil would have made her love me. No, this is part of your test. Because regardless, if they love you, don't. You're still anointed. You're still called. It's a trial with your family. You got one son by the name of Absalom who's a fool who's trying to kill you behind that. Some of you parents, if you let these kids worry you, they got the spirit of Absalom. They have to kill you. You're going to die before me. You keep messing with me. <laughs> you got Amnon who falls in lust with his sister. 
For those of y'all that got little lustful kids, this Bible. You got Tamar who's raped by Amnon who goes into a state of depression that goes in Absalom's house and locks the door and lives as a desolate woman, which means she never produces anything because she's so busy holding on to her rape. But he's still called. You got David who's anointed but got an issue in his flesh. Now this is when it's going to get quiet because some of y'all want to act like you ain't got no kind of desire whatsoever. You are not a eunuch. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. You are not a monk. You go to bed horny. You wake up horny. Your flesh is no joint. You're still married. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. You 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 ain't gonna... When you get done crossing up, your flesh is still going to be flesh. I'm going to say, my God, I got to break this Bible. Now. Come on, lean in. And you think you're not called because there's a war going on within your members. You think you're not called because there's a war going on within your members? As a matter of fact, the more anointed you are, the more the, the bigger the war. Because they want to stop you from doing what God called. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me? Because they want to stop. Watch me. Even when David was on his sick bed for some of y'all, I just want to be delivered right now. What if that thing is your thorn in your flesh? that's going to keep you on the altar what if that thing is going to keep you laid out before God what if I don't give you this you'll become arrogant so I got to poke you every now and then just for you to lay on your face I need you to turn and tell somebody but there's still a word over your life regardless of your trials and your tribulations you're still anointed. to get on your feet everybody stand there I'm getting older, but my word is still there. I'm going through a little something, but my word is still there. Please hear me. Please. I'm watching some of y'all abort your word. I'm watching some of y'all give in to what people say rather than what God says. You have to hear me. Timing? You want to talk timing? Why did he make me wait until I was 40 to start pastoring? I knew that I was called to be a pastor in my 20s. But why did he make me wait until I was 40? You know what he told me? Had I given you this in your 20s or your 30s, you would have messed it up. I had to wait until you get to a level of maturity before I could release you. Because when I give you your kingdom, your kingdom is going to be for the rest of your life. I need you to just say, God, thank you for making me wait. You want to talk trials? You want to talk trials? My trials made me struggle with my third, which was trust. Because you can't get the word unless you trust the Lord, that all things are coming together. Look at me. Look at me. You have to trust him. The hardest time for me to trust God is when I asked him to do something and he didn't do it. My mother was diagnosed with cancer and at seven, I'm praying healer, healer, healer. I'm quoting scriptures. I'm coming up with my own prophetic song. I'm in my car singing songs that ain't nobody ever heard before. I'm going broke. I'm sweating. I'm believing God. And seven months later, I'm at a funeral? Are you kidding me? And I told the Lord, this is my honest confession. I don't know if I could ever trust you. But because I got a relationship with God, he didn't hold that offense against me. In my prayer time, I heard him say, so this is all it took to break our trust? When I've answered, gave, given you more yeses than I've given you no's. And so now our relationship is based on this one situation? What if even my plan is in her death? What if I'm behind the funeral that I had to move her out of the way to make some things happen in your life, but you can't get 
the manifestation until you receive the revelation of what's going on in your life. And I need to know, regardless of what happened, to, are you going to trust me? You're either going to be like Peter. You're going to step out the boat. Get out of your comfort zone. Or you're going to be like the three Hebrew boys. You're going to step into the furnace. And you're going to say whether he do it or not, he's still going to be God. Come on here. Or you're going to be like Anna who locked herself inside the temple and fasted and prayed. What am I trying to say to you? There are some, watch me, there are some trials. I need you, there are some, some things that you have to trust. Regardless of what happened, he is still Look at the screen, Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord. It's all your heart. I don't want to trust. Then you got your grandmama singing, I will trust in the Lord. Shut up, Granny. I will trust. Come on, church babies. How long are you going to trust him? I will trust Saint Jabbar. Um, and I got a real Baptist over there. She rocking like this. Trust the Lord, clap your hands and tell the Lord I trust you. Clap your hands and tell the Lord I trust you. Hold on, Danny. Clap your hands and tell the Lord I trust you. With tears in your eyes, clap your hands and tell the Lord I trust you. I trust the word that you've spoken over my life. Come on, y'all, just for a few seconds, for a few seconds. Hold the music, Danny. Hold the music. Clap your hands and tell the Lord I trust you. Everybody that's struggling with rejection, clap your hands and tell the Lord, I trust you. Everybody that has any kind of failures, clap your hands and tell the Lord, I trust you. Everybody that got some question marks over your life, can you just clap your hands and tell the Lord that I trust you and I trust the word that has been spoken over my life, that has been spoken over my life. For some of y'all, it's A. For some of y'all, it's A. And what is A? Time. For some of y'all, it's B. And what is B? Trials. For some of y'all, based upon A and B, I'm struggling with C, which is trust. And for a few of y'all, it's D. All of the above. That's where I am. If you know that I've been talking to you, when Pastor Jamon and I were, in, and Dr. Connor were studying this, there's a song that kept coming up. And I will remain confident in this. I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord. See, the song cut it off. But allow me to give you the scripture. Because I want you to read the last part of it. When it says... In Psalms 27, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Here's my line. In the land of the living. Which means you can't die until you see it. <laughs> Just lift your hands until the Lord I Samuel, I need you to get your trust back. Get out of your seat and come to this altar and let God do what he do to you. Get out of your seat. He still got time to do it. Regardless of your trials, he's still going to do it. All I need you to do is get your trust level back up. But the Lord 
wants my life salvation Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? Come on, you say. The Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Yeah. I will wait on you. Get out. I need these words to come out of your mouth. The Lord. The Lord is my life of salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? The Lord. The Lord is my light and salvation. You say. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? Lift your hands and say, I will wait on you. In the midst of my trial, I will trust in you. In the midst of everything that I'm going through, I will wait on you. How you gonna wait? I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, say, I will remain. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I know how you feel. But I also know that I have to encourage myself in the Lord. When we sing songs, we're not singing to you. We're leading you into song for you to sing it unto the Lord. He's familiar with your voice. He's familiar with your sound. And he wants to hear you say, I will remain confident in this, that I will see what has been spoken over my life. I need you to lift your hands and everyone in this building, it has to come out of your mouth. It has to come out of your mouth. You literally have to open your mouth and say this to the Lord. Because he's waiting to hear it come from you. Nobody can say it on your behalf. You have to say it for yourself. Say I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Lift your hands and say I will remain confident. See the goodness of the Lord. Oh, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, I will remain confident in this. I will see we said the our hope. goodness of the Lord. up in the Lord. Close your eyes and say it. We said Worship while the band plays. Let me hear your worship right there. Go for it. I trust you. 
I trust you with everything that concerns me. I give you my life. I give you my everything. I give you my everything. Yeah. Come on, say, I'm going to live. I'm going to live to see it happen. Come on, encourage yourself in the Lord. I'm going to live to see it happen. I'm going to live to see it happen. Everybody say, I'm going to live to see it happen. It has to happen because God has said it. I'm going to live to see it happen. Lift your hands, open your mouth and worship God. I need to hear you. He's attracted to sound. your way back to your seat. I want you to hug through you and say, and it shall come to pass. All things are working together. All things are coming 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 together. Be not weary in well-doing. Come on, y'all. Be not weary in well-doing. Come on, encourage yourself in the Lord. I'm going to live. I'm going to live to see it happen. I'm going to live. I'm going to live to see it happen. We cancel your funeral. You're gonna live a long, healthy, anointed, prosperous life. I'm gonna live to see it happen. Lift your hands and me hear your worship. Word has already been released. The word has already been released. And your mess up is not bigger than the promise. <laughs> I need the whole music. I need to hear voices. Give me one minute. I need to hear voices. I need to hear the sound of the promise keepers. Come on, I need to hear you. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody has been going through a certain trial. I need to hear your worship. Let your worship be more intensified than your trial. Open your mouth and release your sound. Let me do this and my assignment will be complete. There are eight people in this building that I literally came to get you today. We're we'll talking about timing. This is divine timing that you're in the right place at the right time. You have to be around someone that's not intimidated with the word that is over your life. 
You have to be in the right place that can feed your promise, that can feed your gift, that can steer you and direct you in the right situation. If everyone could stand for just the next two minutes, because I don't want anyone to step over you. It's a 911 situation. Time has been your issue. Trials have been coming at you. Some of y'all, I'm going to need you to get over your no so we can get you ready for your yes. And if you know that I am talking to you, get out of your seat. Number one, someone's going to accept the Lord. Number two, somebody is already a believer, but say, I know that this is the church that God called me to. And if you know that I am talking to you, there are about eight of you in this building. Forget about people. Get out of your seat and walk towards me right now. Move. Come on, if you know that I'm talking to you, get out of your seat and come up here. Move. 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 He added to the church daily. Get out of your seat and get up here. Move. There are two more young men that are supposed to be up here. I canceled death. Get up here. Move. Move. For everyone that just walked up here, all things are coming together. And this is the first step for you to begin to see that all things are going to work together for the good for you. God got you from this point on. Because he has you, I hear me clearly. That does not mean that you're exempt from going through. But you are exempt from being a failure. Defeat is not an option. Do me a favor, won't you turn around and you're going to follow this gentleman right here. Just follow that gentleman right there. Come on, everyone, let's celebrate souls. Follow him for one minute. Everyone have a seat for one minute. I want you to get your tithes and your offering ready. For those of us that are tithers, it's not even an option. It's how I live. And so I move. But everyone else, I want you to get an offering in your hand. For those that came in late, I've asked those that can. I need 250 people in each service to sow a seat of 25 or 50. And I can minister to enough kids. I can do in-reach and outreach. We literally go after kids whose parents are either locked up or deceased. And we make sure that they have an amazing Christmas. Even if you don't believe in Christmas, it's okay. Let's bless a kid anyway. But I want you to give a seat. How do you give it? You can give your tithes, you can give your offering by the code. You can go on our website, our app, you can give, but everyone gets something in your hand. Everyone gets something in your hand. I gave my way out of poverty. I didn't just end up in wealth. I learned how to sow my way out of poverty. I had to let God know that he could trust me with finances. And whatever he told me to release, I gave it up. Because to whom much is given, 
much is required. Don't say nothing until you, the Lord tell you to write an $80,000 check. And you got to sign it over. <laughs> I've been to the point where he says, let me get all that up off of you. And I had to obey him. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken and nor his seed back for bread. And if he made me release that much, can you imagine what he brought back? Some of y'all keep looking at what you release rather than what you have coming. And it's your reaping season. One seed don't change your course. I could teach it if you let me. When you learn to continuously give and continuously, it's a flow that has to come out of you. It's a flow that comes out of you. And some of y'all begin to pray that whatever they need, let me always have it. God will make sure that you never lack anything. Come on, get your seat ready and stand to your feet. Some of y'all come to church every Sunday. And you still giving that same dollar you gave in Bible band. Sunday school. When you was a kid. And you ball, you ball that dollar up so tight that it take two of our finance people to unroll that dollar. Unroll that dollar and get it ready. We're so glad to have Zeke with us today. I was going to call him, but I know you hate when people keep calling on you every time you come in. Can I just sit and get a word? Nope. <laughs> if you could encourage anybody in song based upon the word that you, can we give them a, it's like, just a piece. I love you so you know I follow you on social media I keep up with you I see you all over there singing and they don't know how to fall out like we fall out we're gonna fall out for you <laughs> and you'll understand if us when I look at us it amazes does it blow your mind the way that the doors that God has opened for you this is for us key now what key did you give them E flat please like I'm a singer E flat does it blow your mind how God has opened doors for you that you get to travel the world? Indeed. Like, Indeed. like does it, is it mind-blowing? Yes. When did you know that it was going to happen? Can you encourage somebody? Like, what was it? I wouldn't say I knew when it was going to happen. I just, when it happened, I knew it was God. Did somebody bring your name up? Yes. And your gift made room for you? Indeed. And how many places have you been in the world since this one platform that you've hit? I can't even count them all. <laughs> so he has exceeded your expectation. Exceeding abundantly above all I could have ever asked or thought. I need those of y'all that believe that God, there's a word over your life and it's bigger than where you are right now before he opened his mouth. And you will hear his gift in a few more minutes. But before you hear his gift, the same God that did it for him is no respect of persons. Your gift will make room for you. Give me five seconds of you worshiping God for what's coming your way. You've been waiting on a blessing, but it seems it just won't come. Body sick, pain everywhere, and it seems nobody cares. But the devil, he's a liar and a deceiver. He's a deceiver too. It's not through blessing you. The devil, he's a liar and a deceiver. He's a deceiver too. I don't care what he said. You got to know that God, he's not through. My God It's not through Grab the horn 
gods of the altar cause God yeah. he's not through blessing you yeah. clap your hands and say my turn is next God, I wish some of y'all could grab that thing right there. Same God. Yeah. Come on, lift your seat up. My God. Yeah. Hold your seat in one hand and take your other hand and do this over your head. Because your word is about to match up with your seed. It's about to go exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ask or even think. He's about to blow your mind. Come on, while you're doing that, repeat after me. I'm a tithe and a giver. And I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. I am living in Ephesians 3.20. How long are you living it? For the rest of my life. On your way out the building, if you have envelopes to your right, your left, you'll see or you can deposit it in. If you're texting, you just text the verse NLCSE to 91694. However you give, everyone so something. Consider yourself dismissed. When you have to build and tell somebody there's a word over my life. Expect greatness. God bless you. You consider yourself dismissed. I'm here in town. I'll be at Bible study on Thursday. Meet me Thursday for Bible study around the corner, 78th and Dobson. I love you all. Consider yourself dismissed. Pastor Jamon and I will stand here for the next five minutes to greet any out-of-town guests.